In Creo Parametric, you can flatten a cable harness and include the connectors and also include additional components like back shells. But for including the back shells, there are a couple other steps that you're going to have to take. Let's take a look at that. So again, I flattened this harness in another video. We do not have the ability to assemble in the back shells. So let's go back to the cable harness and fix that. Let me go to the view menu and switch windows over here. So originally I had routed the cables in this particular assembly. Let me hide the skeleton. Let's go to the harness assembly itself. So here we have the different components. Let's go into cabling mode. I'll go to applications and then cabling over here. And I need to switch to a center line display from the thick cables. The two steps that you're going to have to do is first off, make sure that your harness has a location point somewhere on the actual back shell or whatever component that you want to include. And to do that, let me make sure I turn on my datum axis visibility. I'm going to use layers. I'll get to that from the quick access toolbar. I've customized my quick access toolbar to include the layers icon. I will use the pick icon to access the layers of this particular back shell. Let's turn on the display of this axis routing layer and I'm going to repaint the screen. And so now I can see there's an axis over here. Can I get to it? It's right there, I think. Yeah, that oh, that's a segment cable, but I can see the axis even though if I'm having trouble picking it. I have a location point over here and if I select it, I can edit definition and then from the placement tab over here, I can see that right now that location point is located on an axis belonging to the D38999 connector. Instead, I want it located on the axis belonging to that back shell. So with that field still selected, let me move my mouse until the axis highlights. And there you can see it is the M85049, which is a straight back shell. Well, the dash 38 is the straight back shell. Let's select the axis for the new routing location and then just drag this out a little bit. And again, if I hover my mouse, you can see that it is now attached to the back shell component. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. So again, that's one of the first things you have to do. You have to make sure that the that a location point in the harness references the component that you want to attach. The second thing that you need to do is attach that component to the harness. So it's kind of a weird circle that you do. If you go to the components overflow menu, there is the attach to harness command. It'll open up the menu manager and we will choose to add and then I'll pick this component. Right now in the message area, it's prompted me select one or more components to attach to the flat harness. I'm going to select this one over here and it says the component has been attached to the flat harness. Now let's go back to the flattened harness and see if we can get this to display. So I will go over here. Some For some reason, every time that you hop back and forth between the flat harness window and the other window, the accessory window blows up back to its original size. And before I can attach that component, let me go to where it is. Before I can attach the component on here, you have to regenerate the model. If I just go to flatten and components right now, you'll notice that assemble is still grayed out. Let's hit done and then regenerate automatic. Now when I go to flatten and then components, now we have the ability to assemble and I'm just going to choose assemble all and there you can see a preview of the back shell that comes in here. Let me go back to my saved view front that I have in here and then go to that side and I realize, hey, I've got this rotated in a way that I don't want. I want the pins instead of being normal to the computer screen or excuse me, the screws, I want the screws to be uh, facing up and down as opposed to normal to the computer screen. So I can choose to redefine this particular com component. And here we have orient and orient angle. I'll choose orient angle. And let's try rotation of 90 degrees about the Z direction. Oh, now it's 180 degrees off. Let's redefine again. Pick this component and orient angle. 
This time let's use another 180 degrees rotation. That way I just have it looking the way that I want it to. So that is good for the first back shell on here, but there are three other back shells that we want on here. So let's go back to the harness window. And yep, this one over here. Now let's go over to the other components. Now the thing about the other components over here, when I was connecting them originally, I actually connected them to an axis belonging to the back shell. So for example, if I edit definition of this location point and then go to placement, hey, it's attached to the M85049. Same thing if I check out this location point, edit definition, placement, yep, right location. So I don't have to edit definition of that one. And same thing over here, select this, edit definition, placement. I'm just confirming that all those location points already have some kind of connection to the back shell. Now I can go to the components overflow menu, choose attach to harness, and click the add button. Now I can select one or more components. I will select this one and then hold down the control key. I'm actually not sure if you have to hold down the control key, but I do it. And this one over here and hit done return. So now let me just repaint the screen real quick. Let's also turn off the axis display seeing as I no longer need it. Let's go back to the flattened harness and again, the accessory window comes up super huge again. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. I'm actually going to move this to the side as well. All right, so I'm back over here. Again, before I can attach those components, we need to regenerate. And I'll choose automatic. And then when I go to flatten and components and then assemble all, we have something weird that happened over here. If I take a look... Yeah, everything is fine in the model tree, but for some reason, the angle on some of these wires got changed to being zero degrees instead of 90 like they were before. So let's go back and choose modify. This is the old modify command from the 1990s. Again, this has not been updated in forever. It's another good reason why you might want to check out the harness manufacturing extension from Virtual Interconnect out in Scotland. Uh, so right now we're in the modify command and I'm going to try to, let's do pick from list. There we go. Here we have the segment that I want to modify. Right now this is at zero degrees. Let me try changing this to 90 degrees. Actually, let me, um, let me change that to 90. Also this bend radius got really huge. Let me try 25.4 correspond to one inch and in the old way of doing things after you modified something then you had to regenerate manually automatic and so there we have that going up over there let me go to the other segment over here that got screwed up let's go to modify and again I'm gonna right click over here and choose pick from list here's the flat segment that I want to modify let's click the OK button and Again, for some reason, it reset the bend radius for that. Let me change it to the value that I want to use. And let's change the angle here to 90. And hit done and done return and regenerate automatic. All right, so I fixed those segments over there. And then again, if I zoom in over here, I can see, hey, I've got my back shells on there as well. So now I'm ready to make some drawings of this flattened harness. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.